Okay guys, um, more stuff on the new features in Logic 10.4 and here we have the new Chroma Verb Reverb um, and very nice it is too. It, you can think of it as like a digital rack reverb type effect and this replaces the old Platinum Verb which has now gone. That Platinum Verb had been in Logic since what, the, the 30 year war or something? I don't know. Um, but this new reverb is really nice. Okay, now there are two pages, the main page and the details page. Both of them have an equalizer on them and both of them have different controls, right? And then here in the middle we have this panel and we click it and we can choose our core reverb algorithm that we're going to work with. Now at the moment I've got this set up on a stereo auxiliary return being sent out to by an auxiliary send on a snare channel, right? So let's listen to the different algorithms. This is room, chamber, they're very similar. The chamber's got less upper end and it's slightly bigger. Concert hall, bigger, more reflective. Theater, same size as concert hall but less um, reflections bouncing around because they'd be more controlled in a theatre acoustic environment. Synth hall, quite a smooth thing, not too much bouncing around, um, but quite big, like a theatre concert hall size. Digital, a bit fizzier, a bit richer in top end diffusion. Dark room, less uh, upper end diffusion, that's been sort of taken out. So it's a darker sound, less upper end. Dense, fuller, um, a fuller um, decay and dispersion and diffusion, right? Uh, more body to it, finer. Smooth space, nice smooth um, diffusion to that. Not too much bouncing around. Vocal hall, it's got some bounce back. Um, and it's kind of dipped out in the presence area of the vocal. So it's upper and lower and the, the, the sort of 1, 2k, 3k mids dip down it sounds like. Reflective hall. Lots of reflections there as it says. Strange room. And it's got like a very, very short delay uh, signals in it with feedback. Um, airy, nice non-bouncy diffusion, nice and fine and bloomy, much more boxy and sort of this bounce up. Um, okay so you choose a, a, a starting algorithm, let's go with digital and then next thing is we've got this damping EQ. Now this damping EQ, there's the 100% line where on this line you're not cutting or damping any frequencies or boosting. And notice most of the display shows you area below the line to dampen, to reduce frequencies. That's the idea of this. Although you can go up above to boost frequencies, but it's really about damping out frequencies and it's a four band EQ, just like um, four of the bands from the um, channel EQ. So you've got a low shelf, right, and you can adjust the slope for that. And you've got a high shelf, and you can adjust the slope for that. Right, boost, cut, frequency, right. And then you've got um, two peak bands. Cut, change the frequency, boost if you want, but mostly it's about cutting, and use the Q to adjust the width. There's two of those. Okay. Now this is dampening the diffusion and decay of the reverb signal. It's not in any way affecting the dry signal. If I turn this off and we go to the channel itself, I've got another chroma verb inserted on the channel. Okay, here it is. And if have a listen, this is up full dry because it's like there's an insert with let's have it 60-70% wet. I'll take the dry down completely and listen to the wet signal. Take all that down. Right. 
right? That's dampened all these lower and mid frequencies of the reverb um, diffusion and decay. Listen to the dry signal though, it's completely unaffected. Right? So this just is this EQ is to is used to dampen the frequencies working in the di diffusion and decay of the reverb. Let's go back to the send one now. Okay. So you know I could dampen out the bottom end. And my diffusion uh, and decay of the reverb loses these lower frequencies, you know, do whatever I like. Boost the tops. Making it even fizzier at the top end. Dip out this presence area around 1k quite tightly. You can really sculpt the diffusion, uh, the EQ characteristic of the diffusion and decay of the reverb with this, right? Um, now over on the details page, we'll come we'll come back to these settings. And over on the details page, there's another EQ, and this is the output EQ. It's an overall EQ to sculpt. This dampens frequencies in the diffusion of the reverb. This overallly sculpts the final sound leaving the reverb. But again, it does not affect the dry signal. Again, let's shut this one down and go to the insert one on the snare channel. Right, let's put this flat. Go to details. Well, let's first make it um, all dry. And look, no effect. Right? Listen to the wet signal, however. So this only affects the uh, wet signal, the, the whole uh, reverb signal coming out of the unit. Right, but never the dry signal. Let's go back to the send unit. Okay, so this you can use it to tweak your final output. So uh, the EQ curve of the, of the output of the reverb, right? And that's that's how it works. And again, this is like the channel EQ. You've got two mid band, peak bands, a low shelf, a high shelf, a high cut, and a low cut. And they work just like the channel EQ. Choose a peak band, frequency, boost, cut, adjust the Q, etc. Choose the shelf. Low shelf cut, boost, adjust the slope, etc. Right, okay. So that's the output EQ. Right. So you choose your core algorithm, dampen the diffusion decay characteristics if you want, and you can EQ the output. Now we've got these other parameters here. Now we've got a pre delay setting here. And um, Logic, in their documentation, is quite good about the way they describe this. For beginners, they're saying, bring it up until you hear an actual echo, and then back it off. OK, now that's your pre-delay. It can also be set to musical timings. By default, it's in, um, it's in milliseconds, right? This is your attack, how long it takes the reverb to swell up. Then you've got the size of the room. Small. Or bigger, but that's just the size of the room. So that affects the reflections, the time of the reflections. Whereas the decay is how long it takes to disappear, you know, to diffuse away to nothing. So you can have a small size, which gives you shorter little reflections, but with a longer decay. Or a bigger size with short decay. OK. Then density. Hard to hear it, I suppose, you could say. Well, that's just how much diffusion there is going on. It's subtle though. It's different on different uh, core algorithms. This is the decay of your reverb. Just again, not the size. The size is the same as the size of the actual room, which affects how fast any reflections bounce back. This is how long it takes for the diffusion to decay away. And that could be set to musical timings as well, which is very useful. All right. And it has a freeze control, which is a bit like the hold control on an old digital uh, echo. 
when there was an echo going on, you could press the whole button. It would just moo, 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 repeat that captured bit of echo. And then that was further developed into um, looping pedals that artists used to play in a phrase, loop, and then play over. But you can, using automation, you can capture some decay. And then let it go when you want. You could do that with automation. That could do some quite cool effects. Um, now your distance control here, it's not the same as adding more wet. You know, like in the old days, you have your auxiliary send sending out to the reverb. The more you turn up the send, the more you put the sound in the reverb. But this is not the same thing. This actually does have the effect of, you know, having the signal further forward or further back in the sound in the in the space. Take the pre-delay down for this. It's quite clever that one. Here's your dry and wet controls. If this is an insert effect, you put the dry up full and blend in the amount of reverb. If it's on an auxiliary return, you have the dry completely off and the wet up at 100%, and you adjust how loud that reverb return is in the mix with the channel fader of the auxiliary return that the reverb is sitting on. Okay, that's all those controls. Then on the details page, we've got a quality control. Low, high, or ultra. Low does make it sound like a cheaper old school reverb. A bit grainier, a bit different tone. Then you've got the mod section here. This modulates the diffusion and decay of the reverb. It's really best to just try this and hear it yourself. If I choose a sine wave at full mod and full mod depth, you know, 10, 10 hertz, it's not fast. For maximum modulation 10 hertz but these modulations of the diffusion have the effect of fattening up the diffusion it's wobbling the diffusion right and with this up and down sine wave or this random type wave Or this noise type wave. And the smoothing smooths it out. This adds density, changes the tonal density and the actual density of the of the diffusion. The best thing to do is experiment with it and listen to how it makes the sound um, sound. Like on the sine wave here. If I put it up full mod speed and depth, you hear it's sort of doing this woo, 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 wobbling down of the diffused, dif the diffusion frequencies that are fizzing away and decaying, etc. So experiment with that. All right. And then we've got your early late reflections. Now, if I go back to this main page and put some pre delay on, right? Go back here, we have it all early reflections, no late. We just get the pre-delay. Push it all this way, we get none of the pre-delay and all the late reflections. And this blends in, you know, what amount of each you hear. And this is the width. That's mono and that's wider than stereo. You know, spreading it out. And then we have this mono maker, which is very clever. Now, this obviously is only going to work if you've got the chromoverb on a stereo auxiliary return or it's inserted across a stereo channel. You switch in mono maker, choose your cutoff, I'm um, not cutoff, um, crossover point, and below that, the reverb output will be in mono and above it will be stereo. So if I was to put this up to 1K of full width, then above one car gets stereo, and below that the signal is monoed, you know, centred. 
which gives me a down the center mid and lower mid and body to the snare and all the upper end fizz above 1k is spread out that's pretty cool as well yeah so you know There's a sound, right? Fizzy reverb. With the mono center below 400 hertz, roughly. A little bit of modulation to fatten it. And... Um, not too much early. Yeah, you can you can do anything you want with this thing. It's really good. Great little reverb, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, so have a play with that. It's a great little reverb. That is the new Chromaverb.